you are the light of the world. And so what we gather together here and what we experience is not something we leave behind when the candle goes out, but it is something we take with us out into the world and bring to people wherever we go. So I welcome you to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries Congregation. We are in our 15th year of being present in the Coachella Valley and we're uh, excited about that as, as, it, uh, as this year unfolds and we look forward to uh, some anniversary celebrations next year. We know that we are striving to be uh, the best darn UCC church we can be. Um, it has uh, been since 2005 that we've been a United Church of Christ and uh, we strive to live up to the modern motto that says whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And so we know that we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and differences and perspectives. And in that sense, uh, we know that in creation there are people who are black and red and yellow and brown and white. And our intention is to be as welcoming as possible to all people in God's creation. We know also that uh, we come from different uh, political viewpoints and we do our best to be welcoming and understanding as well as doing our best to treat each other with respect and understand one another. We know that we come from different economic backgrounds and statuses and educational levels and in all those ways we strive to uh, welcome all and strive to uh, welcome people where they are. In particular, we know that uh, in a congregation like Bloom, we were founded years ago as a Reconciling Ministries congregation. In the Methodist tradition, that means that we were open and affirming, which is the word for the UCC tradition, which is what we became as a part of our bylaws in 2005 when we formed. So this organization has been an, a, a Reconciling Ministries group and an open and affirming congregation since our very inception. And so then, it is then for me a great uh, dishonor happening when on Wednesday of this past week, our government in three ways um, put up actions against the LGBT community. I don't have to read the newspaper to us to know what was going on, but it was a, an attack upon a community that we welcome and that we say we will strive to include and not only include but also protect. And for some of us, that means our very selves. And so let it be that we renew ourselves on this day, uh, knowing that as an open and affirming, reconciling ministries congregation, who also in that same bylaws paragraph says we are a peace and justice congregation, who will stand for peace and justice, that we will be those people. And as we are in worship together, we are praying and we are singing and we are welcoming one another with our whole lives. As we continue in our worship, we know that there are people that are transgender, <coughs> cisgender, transitioning, no gender identity who are among us. And we welcome all people. We know there are people who are lesbian, gay, and bisexual. We welcome all people. We know there are straight people, and straight people are welcome too. <laughs> this is just a little humor in a very, very serious time. And so let us also know that we, uh, we welcome good humor uh, in, in, uh, in our ministry together. So now it is that we gather ourselves. We've been scattered in the community, and we now bring to this place uh, a gathering of our heart and soul and mind and strength for the worship of God and the edification of one another and we receive this music of centering as a transition time uh, which is followed by a brief moment of silence and then and meditation and then uh, Phyllis Ramsey will lead us in our opening worship. Good morning. Please rise as you are able and join me in reading the responsive call to worship. We 
come to renew our souls with the power of living faith. We gather here for learning and love while appreciating what is past and doing the radical ministry of mending hearts, minds, bodies, and souls in the world now. Here, here we will embrace each other, knowing our differences, celebrating our common creation, and welcoming the refreshing spirit of God. Shalom, shalom, peace, pause, peace, amen. Please remain standing for opening. This is the time in our worship when, in faith, we open our hearts to ministry. Now in prayer, we welcome God's spiritual embrace. Together we say, God, all people, bless us and come to you. Bring your light into our world, where love is given way to hate, where weapons of the war bury the sounds of peace. But put your words on our lips, that we will proclaim what is good. Put your love in our hearts, that we will be bearers of hope and disruptors of peace. Amen. Loving Creator of all, wonderful Counselor for everyone, Sovereign of Peace. Receive now our sincere and silent prayers. To all our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. 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 Prayer has the power to generate insight. It often endows us with an understanding not attainable by speculation. Some of our deepest insights and attitudes are born in moments of prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us now receive the word. Hallelujah. Give thanks to Yahweh and call on God's name. Proclaim God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to God. Sing praise and tell of all of God's marvels. Glory in God's holy name and let the hearts that seek Yahweh rejoice. Turn to Yahweh, to God's strength, and seek God's presence constantly. Remember the marvels God has done the wonders performed and the judgments pronounced, you descendants of Sarah, Abram, God's faithful ones, you offspring of Leah, Rachel, and Jacob, who are God's chosen. Yahweh is our God, whose authority covers all the earth. God remembers the covenant forever, the promise God made for thousands of generations, the pact made with Sarah and Abrams, the oath to Rebekah and Isaiah, the decree confirmed to Leah, Rachel, and Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel. I give you the land of Canaan, said God, as a portion you will inherit. Alleluia. This concludes.
reading of the Gospel. The Gospel reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. Jesus presented another parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed, which a farmer sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all, to become a tree so that birds of the air come to perch in its branches. Jesus offered them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a baker took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was leavened all through. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this time together. We are thankful to be among people who care about us and love us. We're thankful to be with people who want to give us of their wonderful talents. We're thankful for people who want to share and give to others. And we're thankful for people that help us be who we truly want to be. Continue to guide us by your spirit in our worship together and as we go from here so that we continue to be those people. And we pray, loving God, that as all these words come to us, whether they're sung or prayed or said or read, that all these prayers in our minds, our hearts, in our ears, all these words distill to the one word that you have for each of us for this day. And let that word be love. As the psalmist prayed so long ago, we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I do not know when preachers reduced the mission of Christianity to simply be a ticket to heaven. All I know now is that that teaching is misguided and misguiding. Putting an emphasis on what happens after we die distracts from and limits unfaithfully the intensity of the Christian mission to love one another in the here and now. And when we are daydreaming about some heavenly future, we are not doing the work of being heaven on earth, which is more meant to be the focus of our earthly present than any other. Than any other. Think for a moment with me how each of us would describe heaven on earth. And then let's understand together that that's exactly what the writer of Matthew's Gospel was doing as he wrote Jesus saying, The kingdom of heaven is like one thing or another. It's like whatever has broad influence for a good outcome. The kingdom of heaven is like whatever has broad influence for a good outcome. Here we go looking for some of that. For the Hebrew people who knew their history to be made of nomadic journeys and periods of slavery, finding the sense of security and place was a common refrain communicated as the promise of God. If you have nowhere to live, you will probably dream about having some place someday. If you are always pushed around due to the forces of economic servitude, war, and religious persecution, you would probably long for a home of your own where you could live, work, play, learn, worship, and sleep comfortably in your own realm. That's the dream of the psalm writer today. It's the theme of many psalms and other passages and stories in the Hebrew Scriptures, which we adopt and honor as part of our heritage. It's a dream many people here and around the world share today. 
It's the promise of God for someday. It's the dream of God forever. It's the kingdom of God's heaven in the Bible. And it's the kingdom of heaven we hear about today. It's about relationships, not about real estate. It's about how we are with each other, not where we're going someday way too soon. In the gospel today, we are given a portion of a series of the equivalent of what we could call or what we could say are old-fashioned tweets using short bursts of words to make a big point is nothing new only how they are delivered and to some extent by whom changes over time whether it's on a cave wall in france or a tomb in egypt or a scroll in the synagogue or the pulpit bible in the bible belt or now on a screen in your hand or the screen on your desktop or in your lap the intended communication is a message that is something about human purpose pleasure and posterity the gospel message is about human purpose pleasure and posterity in the case of Jesus in our scriptures the message coming to us is if you want to know what God has for you, look around you and see what you already have that simply sustains you and others mutually. Look around you and see what you already have that sustains you and others mutually. Well, I have a personal professional mission statement to push the envelope of belief structures. Remember that I also say I never want to tear anyone's faith. So while I sometimes chip away at the pearly gates and occasionally roll up the heavenly streets paved with gold, I never want to turn off the lights in paradise. I simply hope we think more maturely and take more seriously the portion of the faith we share that teaches us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've prayed that prayer of the Jewish rabbi named Jesus many times together on purpose. And we will pray it again today. And as we do so, we are declaratively asking for the will of God to be done on earth as it is presumably prevailing in heaven. And apparently this is the evidence of the kingdom of God being present. Differing translations of the prayer adjust the word somewhat, yet the meaning and the intentions remain. I offer to this beloved community as we are gathered here together that I think the will of God is for justice and compassion to be the will of humanity. I know, you know, that we know this is not a simple assignment. One of the reasons we get together like this is because we know life is not simple. We gather for worship as resurrection people around a common table. We do this as a place where we can recharge our batteries with hugs and hope. We reaffirm the covenants to stick together and be fortified. We go back out there and try, try again to make loving justice and compassion happen in our homes, in our schools, in our workplace, in our block, in our office, in our government offices, in our nation, our state, our world, try, try again to make loving justice and compassion happen. And then we celebrate when it does. God, receive our prayer. In the same metaphorical sense that the Bible writers had, we can see ourselves as mustard seeds and yeast, having the ultimate effects to bring security and nourishment to others and ourselves. We do not know where the birds come that land on our branches, yet we offer our branches willingly and freely and widely. 
We do not know what mouths and stomachs we will give bread to, and yet we keep harvesting grain, kneading the dough and baking the loaves. We are never called to set standards for birds or bellies, only to tend them in accordance with our ability. And that is how the kingdom, kingdom of heaven comes. And a lot of our ability and success will depend on just how we see this happening in our own lives, for ourselves, and for others. The story goes that back in the Middle Ages, a dispatcher went out to determine how three laborers felt about their work. Some things don't change. <coughs> Bosses go out and see how things are doing. He went to a building site in France, which is a detail given in this story, though the place is not central to it. This could happen anywhere. It could happen right here. The dispatcher approached the first worker and asked, What are you doing? What? Are you blind? The worker snapped back. I'm cutting these impossible boulders with primitive tools, and I'm putting them together the way the boss tells me to. I'm sweating under the blazing sun. It's back-breaking work, and it's boring me to death. Well, the dispatcher backed away and <coughs> retreated to the second worker, and he asked the same question. What are you doing? And the worker replied, I'm shaping these boulders into usable forms, which, which are then assembled according to the architect's plans. It's hard work, and sometimes it gets repetitive, but I earn five francs a week, and that supports the wife and kids. It's a job. Could be worse, too. And someone encouraged the dispatcher went to the third worker. And what are you doing? He asked. Why, can't you see? Said the worker as he lifted his arms in the sky. I'm building a cathedral. When it comes to creating an offering, the kingdom of heaven to ourselves and others on earth, let's ask the same question. What are you doing? The answer that reflects each and every perspective that we have will be very informative. The kingdom of heaven is like finding a church that welcomes all. Sometimes the people will have tough times and good times. Most times the music will be lovely and the conversations supportive. Sometimes people will agree and disagree and agree to disagree. And mostly people will care about what goes on in their lives and around the world. But always it will be a place where security and nourishment are offered generously and widely and freely taken on earth as it is in heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. We offer ourselves, O oh God, with our gifts, confident that you have a purpose for them and for us. Expand our limited vision to embrace new possibilities. We rededicate our lives at this time. May our offerings reach beyond the barriers of our present thinking and doing, and bless it to make a difference in your world. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the prayer given to us from the Rabbi Jesus, using the words most comfortable and comforting to you, saying, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.